Like literally talking to you. Hi, blank screen. There you go. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to be the crazy narrator in the back, the Wizard of Oz. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us live. We've had a little bit of technical difficulties. Isn't um, that ironic? I know, with tech savvy yourself. Um, but it's all on uh, myself here. So this crazy voice you're hearing in the background is Carly. I'm going to stay muted and let Jules take over and introduce our special guest of today. Um, and then you guys can properly talk about tech and all the fun things um, that Don has to um, kind of explore with the community today. So uh, Jules, take it away. All right. Hello, friends. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Jules, as Carly just introduced me, and I'm very excited to introduce our awesome guest today, lovely Dawn Richardson. If you've never heard of Dawn before, you might know her from Tech Savvy Creative. So Dawn is a former software engineer turned wedding photographer, and now through Tech Savvy Creative, Dawn teaches creative individuals how to utilize technology in their businesses, and she's also a Sprout Automation Pro. Dawn <laughs> joining us today. Yes, I'm so excited to be here, and I have been a longtime Sprout user, so when y'all asked me to do this, I was super honored, and I cannot wait to dive in. Heck yes. So today, Don is going to be teaching us about automation and AI, so if we want to dive right in, if I were five years old, how would you explain what the difference between automation and AI is? Explain like I'm five. This is my favorite. So... On a high level, the difference between automations and AI, automations work on a set of rules that are defined where AI is going to learn from your mistakes. It's going to learn and adapt and evolve over time. So AI is a type of automation, but not all automations are artificial intelligence. Gotcha. So AI get smarter over time and automations do what you tell it to do. Is that, is that fair? That's correct. Yes. Very. Yes. It's the um, artificial intelligence is taking things in the environment into play when it's making its decisions. And it's also taking feedback from you. So like you can say like, hey, I don't like this or I'm going to change this and it's going to get smarter and make better decisions later on down the line. Well, redefining the uh, work smarter, not harder, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> I guess. So I've only recently started kind of dipping my toes into the wonderful world of AI. Do you have any preferred tools that you want to share with us? I have a soft spot for Jasper, of course. He's my best friend. He helps me write all the emails I don't want to write, all the marketing copy that we don't want to write. It's the fantastic. So anything you want to share with us or? Absolutely. So I have a couple favorite like automations and then also AI that I would love to share with you guys. So my favorite use of AI is actually not business related, but I use chat GPT to plan my meals for my family every week. So I'll jump into chat GPT and I'll say, Hey, make me a seven day meal plan that doesn't have fish in it. And it's kid friendly. And I push go and it generates breakfast, lunch, and dinners for seven days. I'll look over it and I'll say, you know what? Actually, we don't like pork, for example. I don't know, some something in that list. And then it'll go in and regenerate it for me. And then I say, great, can you make a shopping list out of this? And then it'll take all of that information and generate me like a categorized shopping list so I can get everything that I need for the week. So that's like my favorite personal way to use um, AI. I use chat, uh, chat GPT to do that. Um, but there's other automations out there that are also really powerful that aren't necessarily AI. One of my favorites is using the text replacement feature on your devices. So this is especially easy if you're an Apple user because it syncs across your devices in iCloud. But if you're not familiar with text replacement, if you are an Apple user and you type in OMW on your keyboard, it'll autocorrect to on my way. So that's an example, but you can create those. So I use text replacement to keep things like my color codes for my business. So I can never remember the right shade of coral for Tech Savvy Creative. So I just type in hex coral and it autocorrects to my hex color for 
my business. I also use this for links. I use it for affiliate links. I use it for um, things that I don't like to type out over and over again, whether that be HTML code for a blog post or my favorite hashtags. Um, I also use it for things like my Google Analytics ID number that I can never find when I need it, my uh, rapid rewards from Southwest. I use text replacement for so many things. So if you're not already utilizing text replacement, you have to get on that right away. Um, other tools out there. Uh, so if we're going to talk about AI in particular, especially to photographers, so at Tech Savvy Creative, um, I work with a lot of tools every single day. That's part of what I do. Um, and so anytime a new tool comes into the game, I like to dive in and experiment with it. But one tool that has blown me away, and that doesn't happen very often, <laughs> but one tool that has left me speechless is actually Imagine AI, which is a photo editing software for photographers. Now, the thing with this tool that makes it different from other tools that I have used is that it is utilizing AI and it's utilizing AI very well. So it takes 3000 of my edited photos to generate me a profile based off of my editing style. And then I can give it a new Lightroom catalog and it will edit those photos for me in minutes. Like we're talking like a wedding in like 10 to 15 minutes, y'all. It is Crazy. insane. And even, you know, like as you go, you upload the changes that you made and it gets smarter and it's gonna learn more and more over time. Now, is this going to totally replace the editor? Absolutely not. Um, but is it going to get you that first batch of edits done in minutes instead of days? Absolutely. So if you're a photographer out there, I would absolutely dive into something like Imagine um, to really see how powerful AI can be in your business. Wow. I can only imagine like <laughs> the same thing, all that like tedious, like you're trying to filter through hundreds of photos from a wedding and like just even hearing that off the top, like three minutes to sort all the best photos to do your basic edits, like that, if you were paying someone or you were doing that yourself, like that's hours of time, right? That's crazy. Absolutely. And a lot of people, you know, do like soft proofing, like this can do the soft proofing for you like in seconds, like it's so fast. So it just, you know, it's all automations and AI and all of this is all about saving time. We cannot make more time. We can always get more clients. We can always make more money, but we cannot make more time. And so this is allowing us to get our time back so we can focus on our family or maybe a passion project all of these different things that we can now do because we have more time on our hands. Heck yes. So if you had to recommend one thing for photographers, your number one thing, if you're like, if you take anything from this live, what is the number one thing that photographers should start automating right now? What would you say? So if you are brand new to automation, you have to start with the basics. We have to get those really important things like your contracts, your invoices, and the reminders automated first. Like these AI tools are great and all, but we need to, you know, let's focus on what matters <laughs> at first. Um, you're a business. So that's where when I sit down with a newer photographer or somebody that's just getting started, that's exactly where I start. So for me, that's all done in Sprout. I use the assistant for all my reminders, for invoice reminders, uh, follow-ups, all of that stuff. You have to start there because you don't want to be manually sending invoices, payment reminders, and all of that. So that's where I always start. Then what I suggest that you do, you're going to map out your full process from start to finish, and then you're going to identify where things are time consuming, where are the things that you don't like doing, or where are the things that you avoid doing altogether, and where are your clients asking the same questions over and over and over again. That is the, where you want to start your automation process. So. For example, if every shoot you finish, you're done with a shoe, you're in the car, you're driving home, and by the time you get home, somebody texted you and was like, hey, when do I get my photos? Um, we've all experienced that as a photographer. Think about how can I automate that process? Can I send them a thank you email an hour after their meeting or their shoot and say, thank you so much for our time together today. Here is a breakdown of the timeline on when you can expect your photos. Are you getting the same clients coming in and there's like, I don't know where to have my shoot. Should I, what should I wear? 
can you create a automated email series or a web page on your website that answers all of these questions for you? So that's how we're going to introduce artificial intelligence and automations into your business to solve those problems. Now, in our world right now, it can get really it's really hard to do it this way to actually look at your process and fix what's actually the problem because there's so much of the what i call like shiny pennies of these like new tools popping up like you see all these new ai tools and you're like oh my gosh it's gonna like change my life i can write blog posts in seconds but if you've never written a blog post before it's really not part of your process yet so maybe let's focus on the other parts of your business that are struggling before you introduce new things into your process just because that new tool helps you well, i think that's solid advice you gotta walk before you <laughs> run right totally i would love to share another one um so my when i was a wedding photographer so a little bit of background i am a software engineer who became a wedding photographer and now i've gone full circle and i do uh, tech coaching for creative entrepreneurs so when i was a wedding photographer my one of my biggest like pain points was actually sending handwritten thank you cards like i just i would like put them on my desk i was ready to go i just could not get them done. And then by the time I remembered, it was like so late and it was like embarrassing. Like, do I need to send this like two months after? Um, so one of my favorite ways to automate is by using a tool called Zapier. So Zapier allows you to connect two tools together. Um, it's also a big reason why I moved to Sprout when I did was because they did have Zapier integration. But I can create a Zap in between Sprout Studio and then another tool called Handwritten. And handwritten is an online service that they actually take robots that have a pen in their hand. Like you can go on their website and see this robot, um, but it, the robot is holding a pen. It will use a handwriting that's similar to yours. So you'll pick the style and the template and it will handwrite a thank you note to you or to your client or to whoever, drop it in the mailbox and send it on its way. So I have an automation that says in Sprout, when a new client books, then send a card in handwritten. So they, <laughs> as soon as uh, that client signs their contract, I countersign the contract, they move from lead to shoot. Handwritten gets a note and it says, hey, I have a new client. It uses the template that I gave it. Zapier will send over the information like the client's address and their first name and all of that stuff stick a stamp on it and put it in the mail for me. And I did not have to do anything. So that is another place, another example of how automations can be powerful and they're really solving a pain point that you have in your own business. Now, if you love writing thank you cards every single day, then like, that's you, like you could do that however you want, but that was where my pain points were. So just a very powerful way to use automations, even for something really simple, like a thank you card. Wow. That's so smart like i feel like photographer everyone who's watching right now is just like taking notes being like thank you cards i cannot yeah i think that's so smart <laughs> um, gotta give you kudos also for just like thinking outside the box too like even what you were saying earlier of like getting chat gpt to write your meal plans like it's so cool it's it's cool what you can accomplish when you're thinking outside the box of like okay i have this really cool powerful technology how can i make it work for me and I think exactly like you said, that's the whole point of it is finding a way to make it work with you or to offload the things that you personally don't enjoy or are just too time consuming, too tedious. And then you get to spend more time doing the things that you want to do, like shooting or being with your people and eating the meals that you've now expertly planned and prepared for yourself, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think also um, as creatives and especially in the world we're in right now, we think of AI and we automatically think of chat GPT or like content writing. We think of the blog posts and like, oh, this will write blog posts for me. Um, and it will. Uh, I mean, obviously, be, please be cautious. And I'm sure I think we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but it's not always just content writing. Like I love Jasper. I use Jasper all the time to help me write my like descriptions for my blog posts and for me to simplify my writing and things like that. Um, but there's other use cases for these tools too. There's another tool out there. Um, Otter is a tool that has been in the transcription business for a long time, but now they have this AI tool called Otter Pilot. 
and it will actually like integrate with your Google Meet or your Zoom meetings, and it will create a transcript of your meeting. So you can say like person one is Don, person two is Jules, and it will transcribe our meeting. And not only that, then it takes all of that information, it'll create summaries for you, it'll identify action items, and then you can like, and then like a plan of attack, like it gives you like all of the to-dos and it takes it from that meeting. You didn't have to do anything. So it's so much more than just content writing. Um, another really popular automation tool out there right now is ManyChat. So if you've seen somebody that's like, you know, comment the word automations, and then you'll get a link to this. That is a tool called ManyChat. Awesome opportunities for photographers out there who are using uh, or that, that are posting about mini sessions or they want to get on a wait list. Like you can type the word wait list on this post and then it will send them a DM in their Instagram tool. Um, I prefer, I mean, if you're going to do this, please use it with caution. That goes with any tool because there are parameters that Instagram has. Um, but ManyChat is a official meta partner. So that does make it a little bit easier. But there's other automation tools out there. One of my personal favorites is called Tango. I don't know if anybody's heard of Tango. So Tango is a tool. You start the Tango and then you do whatever you were doing so for me i might be making a zap or i might be walking through the process of how to set up mini sessions in sprout okay and when i'm done doing that and i stop the tango tango generates a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots of everything that i just did wow. i don't have to go take screenshots i don't have to like it literally says like to, uh, click booking pages now add you know like and then you can go in there and you can like make the text better but if you're doing any type of like how-to guide for your client or maybe you're an educator and you're teaching somebody else how to use the tool tango just created the sop for you it created the outline of all of the steps that you needed to take and you didn't have to do anything other than actually do the steps so so many ways to use these tools that are so much more than content and this is just the start of it things are getting crazy and you know if we if we were to come back and do this in six months i'm sure we're going to be talking about some amazing tools that are not even at our fingertips yet no that's it's crazy i'm like my wheels are spinning even hearing you say that like i am <laughs> sure the other growth models are probably freaking out about otter and yeah I can I just looked at the chat actually and I saw Carly comment yeah. that she needs all of her meeting notes and that was the first thing I thought so you're even giving us inspiration now being like wow I never thought about that or this can really work and offload things that are really tedious like taking notes in meetings and exactly that Absolutely. making SOPs or this is how we do things that's wow yep. you're giving my brain a workout right now I gotta tell you that yeah <laughs> Uh, so now that we know all the cool things that you can do with automation, what would you caution someone or what should someone not do when they're trying to experiment or implement some AI and automations into a system that's already in existence? So whether that's like you're working with pen and paper or you're kind of just dabbling with what even Sprout, for instance. So I think sometimes people learn better when you tell them what not to do. So any cautions or things that people should be mindful of when trying to. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and I'm sure your Sprout friends will get a kick here. Um, so I come from a software engineering background. Number one rule in software engineering is you do not test in prod. You don't test in production. You test in your testing environment. Please, please do not test your automations on your clients. Your clients are not your testers. So if you have to go make a separate email address, or if you have to, you know, test it yourself with your own email address eight times, do it. Your clients are not your testers. Go through this process, test it over and over and over again. And I want you to be confident that you know that this is going to work. AI is not going to give you that peace of mind. Sorry, not AI. Automations in particular are not going to give you that uh, peace of mind and that confidence if you don't know if it's going to work or not. So test it and test it again and don't let your clients be the guinea pig. So number one rule. Now, when it comes to AI, 
the biggest mistake that I see a lot of uh, photographers and creatives make or think that they can do is simply just taking, like going into chat GPT and just putting a blog post in there, copying and pasting it straight, in, straight out and putting it into their website and calling it a day and like dusting things off. Um, AI is very powerful. It is moving very quickly, but I do know that the legal system hasn't quite caught up to it yet. And I am not a lawyer. I have no authority or, so please take those with a grain of salt here. Um, but I think we're going to see the legal system catch up and really kind of identify how we can and can't use these things. So I would encourage anybody to use these tools as a place to start, use it to generate an outline, use it to help fix your grammar, use it to take a paragraph that you already have and make it better, but don't just say, write me a blog post about trends in 2023 and then copy and paste it and call it yours. I think that's going to really come back um, later this year or even later than that. And we're going to have some really clear guidelines on what and what or what can and cannot be used in the world of artificial intelligence. Um, I do know that the copyright, uh, the copyright office has already come down and said something 100% generated by artificial intelligence is not copyrightable. Um, so that's here in the States. Um, so it's happening. So keep an eye out, use these tools to do the mundane, but then also allow you to do what you do best, which you are the creative genius. Use it to enhance that workflow you already have. That's solid advice there. And I think about even when we've pulled, like using Jasper, ChatGBT, just for the outline, exactly like you said, and you still, you got to give it your own, your secret sauce or the, your personality. Cause I think otherwise, like your clients can definitely tell if they read something and then it doesn't sound like you when you meet them in person. And I think it's so important to make sure you're still putting you in your work. And exactly like you said, not just, okay, Jasper or ChatGBT did it for me and I'm going to copy and paste and off I go. It's, yeah, that's something I think it's an easy trap to fall into of just like, here, I just wrote 10 blog posts for the year and I'm not going to copy past them. I'm just going to pass them off and upload them. So it's still keeping your personality, letting that sparkle through. And I love totally. what you said about copyright, because that's something I was going to ask. And then even now realizing that how different our copyright laws are in Canada or the US. So neither of us that's are true. lawyers. Free, nope. free advice. <laughs> you paid for it, but it's definitely <laughs> something I want to look into a little bit more. Because um, yeah, that was something I'd heard come up from photographers, especially when you start seeing like the AI generated images. And that was something I was always curious about is like, it's, it's people's faces, but they're not real people or like where those images come yeah. from and how they get pulled together. Like it, it honestly hurts my brain if I think about it for too long, but that's definitely yeah. something to consider for sure. Yeah, and it's gonna and it's gonna evolve and change over time. Here, there is like an active situation here in the states where somebody created a graphic novel using an AI tool, and they they went in to register it for its copyright, and they approved it, and then they revoked it because now it's like this whole like gray area of like where did this come from, like and what are the terms and all of this stuff. I think they're all learning. We're all learning, you know, but. It's not so much about like how can I use these tools to replace somebody? Like we're not we're not there. We're creatives. We are we are the the brains behind all of this. And I mean if you think about it too, like all artificial intelligence is built on human publications, right? It didn't create anything. It, it came from the humans. So that's just like really something that I like to remember because we are still the foundation of this. Um but can that AI tool get me past the blank screen because how many of us sit there and stare at that cursor as it flashes, right? Like what can it help me do so I can get past that decision fatigue or the imposter syndrome or the analysis paralysis, right? Use these tools to get past that so you can focus on what you do best. So I totally agree. And I will, you know, preach that <laughs> from the rooftops every single day. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking about too, um, I think on that note too, like we always hear the machines are going to come and replace you and to just exactly that, take it as the machines are empowering you to do your job better. They're not coming for you. Like, I don't think you're going to see a robot showing up and shooting someone's wedding now. Like there's still 
exactly the human element, the creativity and the machines are smart, but they were made by us. And I don't think we're getting replaced. No. And, you know, um, so I was, I was listening to an interview from Elon Musk and he said something in that interview that really stood out with me back, uh, you know, a, a, a back when airbags came out, airbags and cars were being installed and people were up in arms about it. They're like, I don't want this long face. Like, how dare you like put this in there without my, all of these things. Right. And people were really upset about it. Well, over time, and as safety, like cars became safer and it really impacted safety in cars in a positive way. And he like compared that to artificial intelligence. Like we are in that, that time where people are up in arms about it. They're like, oh, it's going to take all our jobs. And um, people are really worried about it. But I think over time, we're going to realize that this is not the case. I think there's going to be people, be people out there who try um, to replace people, but it's not the end all of our creativity. It's just a tool to help us and it's going to evolve over time. So we're going to see what happens and, you know, just hang on and ride that wave and take advantage of the tools that are in front of you, because regardless if you use them or don't, they are there and somebody else is going to be using them. So use it, get your time back so you can spend more time with your babies or with your family or your friends, your people, or maybe that's, you know, your passion projects, taking more clients or pursuing something that you've never had the time to pursue. It's good advice. And it almost reminds me what you said about like technology evolving over time. Like I'm sure when we transitioned from only having film cameras to now you have digital as an option, I'm sure that was a big shock at the time being like, you know, this is new technology, it's scary, I don't trust it. But now it's shifted to the point where it's mostly digital or largely and people shoot film because they want to or because they still like Mm -hmm. the aesthetic hasn't changed. Absolutely. You can coexist peacefully and you can have your preferences. Absolutely. And, you know, I haven't met a film photographer that um, isn't always busy. Personally, there, there's so many people out there that love that art form. I am not a film shooter, um, but I respect them and absolutely adore their work. And you're totally right. Yes. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, if you had any points you wanted to bring up, um, we're talking about uh, automating the things that are tedious for you. So I think one thing that comes up a lot, especially on our end, is pricing. So pricing your services or your prints and charging something that is not only fair but like sustainable for you so do you have any tips on using automations or even ai um to automate your pricing and especially for photographers i know we have um, an awesome tool in the software called pricing calculator but i would love to hear your thoughts on that too yeah uh, so when it comes to things like pricing um the biggest mistake that anybody makes and i know this is really what the pricing calculator is focused on but it's people start that they just see somebody else's price and they're like okay i'm gonna do that and they never work it backwards to figure out if that actually serves them so you know working like how much do i need to bring home and working backwards is the way that you need to focus on your pricing. Well, these tools out there, like the pricing calculator and these other AI tools, like they can help you really figure out like what is the market going rate? What, you know, how much do I need to save for taxes? Things like that. So I heavily suggest leaning into these tools because if you're just going to like look and see what that other photographer in your town is offering and call it a day, you don't know their circumstance. You don't know how many kids they have. You don't know if this is their full-time job or if they're doing it on the side. You have to do what's best for you. And this really applies to any creative out there. But the like we started these businesses to get our lives back and to have freedom. And if we don't price ourselves right and accordingly, we're just going to turn this amazing business that we created and this amazing blessing in our lives into a curse. And you're going to resent your job. You're going to really lose the love and passion for what you do. So I would encourage anybody to utilize the tools that are out there, especially a pricing calculator to make sure that you are 
being priced accordingly. And then you can create the life that you want to do, like that you want to create with, you know, your passion. And that's, that's the dream, right? That's why we do this. We didn't, you know, leave our jobs or start our businesses to be miserable. So lean into those tools to make a bigger impact on your life. I love that. And I think especially with uh, International Women's Day a few days ago, I want to empower all of the female identifying folks watching right now is to know your worth and add the tax and don't be afraid to charge what you don't be afraid to charge what you're totally. worth. Know what you're worth and don't be afraid to ask for it. Because yeah, Lauren wrote a fantastic blog all about how women are still not making enough money in this industry. If you haven't read it, you should go read it, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I pass over to the comments, um, yes. If anyone has anything they would like to ask Dawn, feel free to pop um, that in. I, I see a couple. Um, we need to totally talk about how to set up an automation, how to get leads into Sprout from the knot and automate this workflow. Yes, you can absolutely do that using Zapier's email parser. Um, maybe I'll make a video on that. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Um, so uh, I saw one. If we don't use Lightroom, is there anything like Imagine for Photoshop? No, right now. So there might be other tools out there. Um, again, I have, I try to experiment with all the tools and I know that's impossible. And at this rate, they are popping up very, very quickly. Um, I have not used a tool specifically for Photoshop. Photoshop. Um, Imagine does use um, Lightroom catalogs to edit their photos, which is actually the way that they do it is pretty great because when you send those catalogs, the full raw image is not part of it. So you're not sending these like 200 gigabyte catalogs. You're just sending these tiny um, catalogs with previews in it. So it comes back to you very quickly, doesn't require like crazy fast internet connections. Um, I was at a conference last week. I went to the Reset Conference. Thank you, Sprout, for sponsoring me. And um, I was able to upload a catalog and get it back in about six minutes. And I was on horrific hotel Wi-Fi. Like it was really bad. My hotspot probably would have been faster. Um, but because the Lightroom files, the Lightroom catalog files are so small, it was able to upload that and get it done for me pretty quickly. So um, I'll keep you posted if I see anything. Again, like I love to try new tools. So if something comes up for the Photoshop world, I will absolutely let y'all know. Um, if you are somebody that is maybe not super comfortable with Lightroom files and how you're managing your files altogether, I do have a course called Fearless File Management for Photographers. And I help you from your from the point of a memory card, how to format those cards, how to take care of those cards, all the way through import, creating catalogs, organizing the files, exporting, and then backup and archive. So if that's something you need help with, I'm your girl, shoot me a message and I will get you a link to that too. Cool. Actually, if Lauren, if you're willing to drop uh, Dawn's web page or either Dawn's website or her partner page on our site, Dawn's got a lot of her resources linked there, including her course. And you also have a Zapier course as well. Is that correct? I do. Yes. Um, so haven't had a big launch for that one yet. It's just been finished and I have, I have quite a few students in that one. So super excited about it, but I have a Zapier essentials for creative course. So if you're interested in learning how to connect multiple tools together. Zapier supports almost 5,000 tools, which is absolutely crazy. Um, but again, that's a huge reason why I moved to Sprout when I did. I am able to connect Sprout using Zapier to tools like ClickUp, to tools like Handwritten, to email parsers, all of these different things. And it really has allowed me to take my automation game to the next level. So if you are interested in learning about Zapier, um, there is a course for that and it is on that um, ambassador page. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna give everyone a couple minutes. If you have any questions you wanna ask Dawn while we still have her, pop them in the chat. In the meantime, John, is there anything I didn't ask you that you want to touch on? Oh, I don't think so. Um, 
you know, I, when it comes to automations, I'm really passionate about this because I am, I do have a baby that I stay home with. So like my working hours are not, um, your normal, like eight hour days. I normally get like maybe one to two hours a day if I'm lucky. So automations are super important to me. Now, when it comes to these automations, you know, again, don't test in your clients, but sometimes the only thing worse than no automations is a half done automation. You just kind of creates clutter and nothing works. So I would really encourage you to sit down, dedicate a few hours to a particular automation or to um, really refining your process because that few hours that you spend setting these up can save you hundreds of hours down the line. So don't discredit it. I know your to-do list is long. I know that client wants your photos, but take a couple hours, sit down, go to a Starbucks and focus on this. You will be so happy that you did. It's going to save you so much time down the road. <laughs> That's good advice. All right. I'm looking. I got a couple more. Will this be posted somewhere so we can watch the replay? Yes, it will. Yes. Right. We're going to post okay. uh, the link <laughs> in the event, and this will also be on YouTube later today. So we'll post the link in the community group as well if anyone wants to watch. Awesome. Um, I'm, D I'm DMing you immediately. I will respond. Uh, the best place to find me is on Instagram. I'm just tech savvy creative. So find me there. I love chatting with you guys there. Um, I also do like Voxer coaching all day. So if we determine that like we want to spend the day walking through your process together, um, I offer that through Voxer. I just started my photography business uh, three months. What is your advice to get clients and build network? Uh, I'm a firm believer that it's all about the people the people that you serve and how you serve them. And that to me starts with having a solid business backend. So having a plan, you know, for your contracts, your automations, your invoices, all of that, having that process really refined so you can, from the moment of inquiry, provide them with an amazing experience. When you take yourself seriously as a business owner and get this all sorted, other businesses are going to want to work with you too. So if you're in weddings, vendors are going to appreciate your professionalism. They're going to appreciate that it is easy for their clients to book with you and all of this. So that is a really powerful place to start. Treat yourself like a professional. You have this amazing tool at your disposal. Use it and create that amazing experience. So that's what I recommend for somebody that is just getting started. Um, cool. I think that's it for questions, right? I think that's it. Wow. Now you've Yay. left us with so much inspiration, so much knowledge. Like I hope everyone who's watching right now that your wheels in your brain are spinning as quickly as mine are and that you're going to go and deep dive into automations and how they can change your business and look at AI tools and find ones that you want to play around with and make them work for you. And if you're feeling stuck and overwhelmed and you don't know what to do, then you have your friendly neighborhood tech expert to help you and give you some guidance <laughs> on that. I am here and I love this. Um, I just hope I can like sign off with like a word of encouragement, y'all. Like you can do this. It is, you are smart enough to do this. It is so powerful and you will do what's best for you and your business. And this is going to help you get a ton of time back and get your life back. Heck yes. I want you to make a living doing what you love. Absolutely. And like Jules says, there ain't no shame in the AI game. <laughs> I still have a, a little bit of regret for not making up the title of this live, but I'm glad. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I, I'm totally going to make that a sticker. <laughs> I love it. All right, Don, thank you so much for being here, for chatting with me and for sharing all your wisdom with the Sprout fam. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, Lauren's dropped a couple of Dawn's links in the chat here, especially her Instagram. Dawn loves showing up there. Please follow her, subscribe. Just, yeah, we're a big fan of Dawn, as you can tell. So I want to empower everyone who's watching to go and follow Dawn. And yeah. Thank you. I am honored to be here and I appreciate it. Appreciate you right back. All right. I hope you all have a fantastic day, especially to you, Dawn. It's a very snowy day here in Canada. So if you're not in Ontario right now, I don't want to talk about it, but <laughs> I hope the sun is shining. <laughs> you. Yeah, you don't want to know what the weather's like in San Antonio. It's not snowy. <laughs>
<laughs> Sending all the warm fuzzies to you guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Bye for now. Have a good one.